What I was demonstrating on that last chorus was my philosophy about bending. And I've got some pretty high standards when it comes to bending on the guitar because I think it's a, a subject that gets real sloppy with some players, especially when it comes to pitch and vibrato. The first thing that I believe every guitar player should be able to do is use all four fingers and bend each finger a whole step and a half step at least. So I'll start with my second finger, which is what I started that last uh, chorus in C minor out, and I'll bend the B flat up to a C, and I'm going to hit the C, I'm going to hit it straight on, perfectly in pitch, but I'm not going to shake it at all. So that would be absolutely no vibrato. You want to have the control to be able to do that. The next thing I do is I believe I can hit that pitch with no vibrato and then slowly add it in like this. And that kind of control, I mean, you, you, you just, just test yourself at home. You might find that you've got great vibrato, but it's only one single thing you do. You've got one speed. Whereas you really need to have control. One of my favorite players was Mike Bloomfield. And that guy, man, I, I learned so much about bending from him because he just had the slinkiest, most, uh, the sweetest bending going on. So the first thing I showed you was no vibrato, straight to pitch, a real positive bend. Not searching for it like this, or not bypassing it and coming back to it, but right on it. And then the next thing, adding vibrato. When you listen to somebody like Frank Sinatra, you know how he hits a note, scoops up to a note, and then shakes it. That's a beautiful thing. Real great phrasing, you know. The third thing I try to be able to do is I try to be able to... Uh, play a note and the feeling is that the vibrato is already in motion, like this. So still I'm straight to pitch. I mean, pitch is not an issue. You don't want to be hunting for it. You've got to be slamming right on it, very positive. But the vibrato feels like it's already been going. You know, it's part of the song. That's really important to me. Um, <coughs> different kinds of vibrato. I can use a big wide one or a tight one. But each time you hear the pitch, the pitch is definitely that C, you know. Uh, so those three or four different kind of vibratos are, I just demonstrate them using my second finger. The first finger, the third finger, and even the fourth finger. Those, all four fingers should have that kind of control. Now, in the course of the song, I did some, I did some things like this in, the, in that chorus, where I'll play with my third finger on F, and then bend to the F with the E flat. So, even with my fourth finger. So, you, you hear a pitch. Kind of reminds me of some of those things Jeff Beck used to do when he was sort of imp impersonating the pitch wheel on a mini Moog or something, you know. Those kind of bends are cool. Um, and just to divert a little bit um, from the key of C minor, which we were in, if I'm in the key of B7, I can make those kind of bends that, that almost sound... Uh, I mean, I'm not really sounding like a sitar, but I'm thinking in that, in that, in that vibe when I'm doing it. Uh, another couple of bend things I do is um, play a pitch a half step away, like... like pre-bends when you, I'm sorry, so many people just bend the fourth up to the fifth and the seventh up to the root, but you realize that you can bend 
really you can bend any chord tone, you can bend to any chord tone and you can actually bend from any chord tone just as long as you're going to a scale tone. So you can bend um, E flat up to F. Uh, in the key of C when I'm in the Dorian mode, I can bend an A up to a B flat. So that becomes really important to me. There's a lot of famous players out there right now, like uh, I won't name, I won't name them, but you hear that they'll they'll play a note and then remember to vibrato it. I don't think that's right. I think the concept should be you play that note and that vibrato is part of that note from the very jump. You know, it's part of the deal. And speaking of vibrato, something that uh, went down during that chorus. I try to make my vibrato uh, even and relate to the tempo. So if the tempo is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Six. Now what I'm doing there is down, up, 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 down, up. And so it has a, a, a duple meter against that triplet, I guess. <laughs> Every time I hit a note and sit on it, the vibrato takes up where it left off. There's continuity involved. I don't like to hear people hit a note and then have a different vibrato when they get to the next section. I think that's not the right way to go. So all these little subtleties are what make your bending come together and really have a signature sound and a, and a, a way that differentiates you from any other player. Remember, no two vibratos are the same. As much as I try to sound like Eric Clapton or Leslie West or, you know, um, anybody, Hendrix or anybody, I, I'll never do it. You know, I'll never have that hand feel. So you just gotta go for your own.